Hello there world, it's your girl again and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be sharing with you the basic bash commands. Take note that this is for beginners in command line interface. So, if you will ask me bakit kailangan kong matutunan yung commands if meron naman tayong graphical user interface. Well, the answer is, hindi naman lahat ng servers natin merong cPanel or GUI. So, in that case, kailangan mo talagang mag-work using your terminal. Also, there are few more reasons na nilist ko doon sa previous video ko. So, if you haven't watched, ililink ko na lang dito sa description box and you can watch later. So, then, let's start. So, ngayon guys, sa kaliwa, naka-open yung finder ko and sa right side yung terminal. Remember, sa previous video ko, diniscuss ko yung two variants of shell. We have graphical user interface and command line interface. Meaning, kung anong gusto mong gawin sa computer mo, pwede mong gawin through GUI or CLI. Let's say, gusto mong gumawa ng bagong folder or mag-delete ng file, pwede mo siyang gawin through your file explorer, pero lagi siyang may corresponding command sa terminal. Then, let's summarize the things that can make your life easier kapag gumagamit ka ng CLI. Una, tab completion. So, i-type mo lang yung first few letters ng command mo or ng folder or files mo, and then press tab and autocomplete na siya. Second thing is the rerun of commands. Pwede mong i-rerun ang mga commands from your history. Just press up, up, up hanggang mahanap mo ang command na kailangan mo and then press enter. Next is meron tayong shortcuts for clearing the screen. So two things. First, instead of pressing the delete key a lot of times, sa Windows, control U sa Mac, command U para i-clear yung tinipe mo na command. Second thing is yung pag-clear mismo ng buong screen ng terminal mo. So, let's say, puno na yung screen terminal mo and gusto mong i-clear. What you can do is control L para sa Windows and command R para sa MacBook. Last, we have the man command. Ginagamit ang man command para i-display ang user manual ng given command. So, let's say we have man ls. Yung output niya, Includes the description ng ls command. And then, yung mga options na pwede mong gamitin kung gagamit ka ng ls command. Yung mga options na yan, nag start with a dash. So, let's say for example, ls-a, ls-l, etc. So, let's jump into the commands per se. Close natin yan. First command is pwd which means print working directory. Nire-return niya lang yung absolute path kung nasa ang directory ka currently. Let's say for example, nandito ako ngayon sa home directory ko, which is slash users slash girlyreyes. Next, we have the ls command. ls means list. Ang ginagawa niya lang, nililista niya yung mga files and subfolders sa current directory mo or ng isang given path. One option na lang kung ginagamit sa work for ls is yung dash l. Kapag ginamit mo yung dash l, meaning ililist mo siya in long format. So, pag long format, yung output niya includes the permissions, ownerships, and the date time kung kailan mo siya huling may notify. Another common option na ginagamit ko sa work is yung dash a. Meaning, ipakita mo kahit yung mga files and folders na nag start with a dot or yung mga hidden files and folders. Next command is mkdir or make dir. Simple lang yan, kumbaga sa GUI, create new folder. For example, let's create a bash command. Then, let's create another one which is bash commands and then bash commander the reason na nag-create ako ng three folders ay para mapakita ko sa inyo what happens sa tab completion in this scenario sa tab completion kapag meron tayong magkakaparehas na first few letters sa commands or files or folders maglalabas siya ng suggestions like this so what you'll do type mo lang ulit yung next character to complete the command and then tab and press enter so, nag-change directory tayo pupunta sa loob ng bash commands folder. Let's create a new subfolder para sa next demo. So, now we have the subfolder. Then, change directory tayo papuntang subfolder. 
Ang ginagamit ko dito is cd command which is change directory. Later, i-discuss ko more about that command. For now, let's create the inner folder. So, meron tayong inner folder. Pasok tayo ng inner folder. Yan. So, ang corresponding nito, kung pupunta tayo sa GUI, parang nag-double click, double click ka lang sa folders. Yan. So, nandiyan tayo sa inner folder. Now, let's discuss more about the cd command. Let's say, gusto mong bumalik ng one folder up. So, ang gagawin mo, cd dot dot. So, bumalik ka ng one folder up. Yan. So, nandiyan tayo ngayon sa subfolder. What if gusto mo ngayon bumalik ng home folder mo, which is two folders up? So, ang gagawin mo dyan, cd dot dot slash dot dot slash and then enter and then you're back to your home folder depende yan kung ilang subfolder ang gusto mong balikan yun din yung number of dot dot slash na kailangan mong gawin another thing is di ba ginagawa natin cd folder enter and then another cd folder enter and then another cd folder enter Pwede mo siyang gawin ng isa-isa, pero pwede mo rin siyang gawin in one command lang. So, let's say, cd bash commands, slash subfolder, slash inner folder, enter. So, that's the other way para mag-change directory to a specific folder in one command. Another important thing to know is cd slash. Meaning, pumupunta ka sa root directory ng OS mo. Yung root directory is the top-level directory ng system mo. So, it contains all the files and subfolders sa loob ng computer mo. Another one is cd tilde. Yung tilde naman is the home directory ng user mo. So, from anywhere, para kang dumiretso sa slash users slash girly reyes. So, delete natin yung dalawang folders para mas mabilis yung auto-completion. And still existing yung subfolder natin and yung inner folder. Now, let's go to the bash commands folder. And then, let's go to the subfolder. Create tayo ng file dito. There are few ways to create a file. One is touch command. Actually, yung touch, pwede siyang pang create ng file. Pwede rin pang palit ng file access and pwede rin pang update ng modification times. In my case, sa work ko, ginagamit ko talaga yan pang gawa ng bagong file. So, let's say, gawa tayo ng bagong file and name it test.txt and pansin mo, nandun na siya. Next basic command is cp which means copy files or folders. So, simple lang. For example, copy natin yung test.txt papuntang new file which is testing.txt. So, pansin mo, nandun na siya. And it contains the same content as the test.txt. Next is mv command which means move. Pwede mo siyang gamitin pang rename ng file or pang move to another path. Let's say testing.txt. Move natin to test.back.txt. Nawala na yung testing.txt and narename na siya to test.back.txt. Next command is rm. Which means remove. Or basically, dinidelete mo lang yung file or subfolder. For example, delete natin yung test.back.txt. RMT. Press tab. And press enter. Nawala na yung file. Let me show you something. Balik tayo one folder up. And then, try natin i-delete yung subfolder. So, rm, subfolder, enter. And you'll see, naka-receive tayo ng error na subfolder is a directory. Para mag-delete ng folder, ang kailangan mong i-add na option or argument is dash r. Ibig sabihin yan, delete recursively. Now, there's one option na kailangan pag-isipan ng doble or triple bago mo gamitin. It's the dash f option, meaning 
force delete. So, ang gagawin niyan, i-delete niya yung folder mo and files under it without your confirmation. Next command is echo. Yung echo, ina-output niya yung given value to a standard output. Usually, I use echo para mag-display ng environment variable sa terminal. But in this example, let's just output a string to a file. So, echo hello bash greater than the output file. Since hindi pa existing ang hello.txt, automatically na-create siya containing the string na in echo ko. Then, let me show you this one. Add another greater than, change the string, press enter, and you'll see, yung string is appended to a new line. That's the difference between a single greater than and a double greater than. So, let's try this one again. And you'll see, kung ano yung string na in ko, ko, yun ang content ng file ko. Kung gagawin ko ulit dalawa yan, and let me try a lot of times, lahat yan, maa-append lang sa existing file. Next command is cut. Cut means concatenate. This is another way to create a file from a string or concatenate the contents of the multiple files to a single file. Pero in reality, usually ginagamit ko lang siya for reading the contents of a file. Another common use of cut is to empty a file. So para i-empty yung file, you'll do the following command. cut slash dev slash null greater than file name press enter remember this value press enter and you'll see empty na yung file you can also use cat in this way same as echo pero ita type mo yung string values after the command pwede ka rin mag new line dito by pressing the enter key control c to exit let's read the file And there it is. In the same way as echo, pwede ka rin gumamit ng single or double greater than symbol and it functions the same. To edit a file, you can use vi or vim or nano. But my favorite is vim. Hindi ko na hindi discuss kasi masyado ng mahaba, but Vim is also worth exploring. I also use the history command, mostly for reference sa mga commands that I previously use. Another useful command na lagi kong ginagamit in debugging is grep command. I use this para i-search yung string from a specific input file. Let me show you this example. So, ang output, lahat ng lines that contains the string na sinerge ko. Let me show you another example. Kapag ginamit mo yung pipe before grep command, yung output ng first command mo becomes the input of the grep command. So, it's like input, pipe, and the grep command. And the output is just one line with bash string. Let's say, ang input mo is the output of history command. So, yan yung output ng history command. If you use history, then pipe, then grep rm, ang output niya would be lahat ng commands na merong rm. Actually, sobrang dami pa, pero ayoko nang kumain ng sobrang daming time nyo. So, let's end this with a very useful command that I use for debugging. This is the tail command. If you think about tail in literal meaning, buntot, ginagamit ko to to output yung last lines ng isang file. Example, gawa tayo ng log file, website.log. Let's edit. Let's add some contents. And save. If we do tail website.log, by default, ang output niya is last 10 lines. But if you will add the dash n argument, pwede mong i-customize kung ilang lines ang gusto mo. Like so. So, 3 lines dahil dash n space 3. 
pwede kang mag-refer sa manual about the options. Like, for example, ang ginamit ko kanina, the dash N option. Another mostly used option is the dash F, meaning to follow or to wait hanggang merong bagong lines na ma-append sa file. So, let's say, mag-add tayo ng contents dun sa file. So, once na sinave mo yung file, you see, kumbaga parang nakawatch ka dun sa mga changes nung file. Actually, I'm using this sa pag-watch ng debugging logs ko. So, let's say dun sa system ko, nag-log ako ng information or yung system ko nag-log ng errors, may kita ko siya right away. And then, you'll need to control C para mag-end. So, that's it guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Cheers!